Each of a woman's ovaries contains roughly 2 lakhs immature eggs known as primary oocytes when she reaches sexual maturity. A diploid primary oocyte is arrested in prophys 1 of meiosis. Each main oocyte is surrounded by a layer of follicular cells. A follicle is made up of an oocyte and its follicle cells. The first day of menstruation marks the start of an ovarian cycle which lasts roughly 28 days. 6 to 12 primary oocytes mature over the first 7 days of a cycle. Follicle cells communicate with oocytes and deliver nutrients to them through holes called gap junctions as the follicles mature. Each oocyte grows in size while the surrounding follicle cells splits and multiply, resulting in thousands of follicle cells in a single follicle. All but one of the developing follicle begins to deteriorate by the day 7. The surviving follicle develops and its follicle cells continue to maintain it while also supplying it with proteins and informational molecules necessary for early stages of development. Meiosis 1 is completed in the maturing menocyte and it divides into two haploid cells. Half of the chromosomes are given to each of these cells. One cell is known as a polar body, however receives very little cytoplasm. The other oocyte, now the secondary, undergoes meiosis 2 and remains there until fertilization. Ovulation happens on day 14 and the secondary oocyte emerges from the ovary. Microscopic cilia bit of the oviduct draw in the liberated oocyte. This immature egg enters an oviduct where it may be fertilized by a sperm cell and go through the entire meiosis process. The corpus luteum is a tiny mass of endocrine tissues that develops from the follicular cells that are left behind. For two weeks, the corpus luteum stays in the ovary, secreting estrogen and progesterone. This corpus luteum disintegrates at the end of the ovarian cycle if the woman is not pregnant. The ovarian and uterine cycle are closely synchronized each month. The uterine lining grows up and subsequently sloughs off during the uterine cycle. The uterine lining sloughs off to start the cycle and this is called the first day of menstruation. The uterine lining begins to develop again after menstruation in order to prepare for embryo implantation. The uterine lining proliferates during the phase of the cycle which lasts until ovulation. The tissue receives nutrition from the capillary beds. The capillary beds deteriorate just before the menstruation and stop delivering nutrients to the surrounding tissue. The tissue dies and sloughs off through the vaginal canal to the exterior of the body during menstruation. The ovarian cycle is governed by a complex interplay of hormones produced by the pituitary gland and the ovary. The anterior pituitary begins to boost the secretion of two hormones a few days before the start of the cycle, follicle stimulating hormone or FSH and luteinizing hormone or LH. Ovarian follicles are stimulated to develop by FSH and LH. Estrogen is secreted by the follicles as they expand. Increasing estrogen levels in the pituitary restrict the release of more FSH and LH during this period of the cycle. The levels of FSH and LH decline throughout the next week. Beginning of approximately day 12, rising estrogen levels have an unexpected effect on the pituitary gland. Rather of providing a negative feedback to the pituitary, these hormones now provide a positive feedback, prompting the pituitary to generate enormous levels of FSH and LH. On the day 14, LH reaches its highest level. The developed follicle ruptures and releases the egg as a result of the LH surge, which is the process of ovulation. The remaining follicle cells are subsequently triggered by the LH to develop into the corpus luteum, which secretes estrogen and progesterone. 
For the remaining two weeks of the cycle, the corpus luteum stays in the ovary, secreting estrogen and progesterone. These hormones suppresses the release of FSH and LH at this stage. Follicles cannot begin to form during the second half of the cycle due to a decreased level of FSH and LH. The corpus luteum requires LH or a hormone produced by an implanted embryo to stay alive. It degenerates at the conclusion of the cycle if an embryo has not implanted. The corpus luteum stops producing estrogen and progesterone as it degenerates. The ovarian and uterine cycles are in perfect synchronization. At different stages of ovarian cycles, hormones generated by the ovary causes changes in the uterine lining. For example, early in the cycle, estrogen and progesterone levels are insufficient to maintain the uterine lining and menses begins. The growing follicle increases its output of the estrogen around a week into the ovarian cycle and estrogen levels in the body begin to rise. This hormone causes the uterine lining cells to multiply, causing the lining to thicken. The level of estrogen in the body has peaked just before ovulation. The corpus luteum, which develops from the follicle cells that remain in the ovary, releases estrogen and progesterone. The hormones keep the uterine lining at its thickest and most ready for the embryo implantation. The corpus luteum breaks down and seizes the releasing estrogen and progesterone at the conclusion of the cycle if the egg has not been fertilized or implanted. Menstruation begins when the uterine lining breaks down due to a lack of these hormones.